and now I will lapse into formal English. Good evening, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the meeting. <laughs> Welcome to all you with LASIK surgery. Come in. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a relatively not packed agenda tonight, okay. but um, which is good. But the first thing that's up is are the meeting notes from March 8th. Uh, did ever, anyone have a chance to look at them and did they have any, anyone have any comments? Um, I just found one typo in my own notes. And then when I, uh, when I, uh, I think it was on uh, uh, talking about route 611, I, I misspelled route. That's on second page, fourth uh, bullet from the bottom. Uh, towards the, the end, last sentence. I just oh it. yeah yeah that. Oh, you yeah. left an e off. That's all. Yeah, it, yeah it's, it's at New Britain Road and uh, Route Six Eleven. Yeah, yeah. So oh, right, we'll uh, fix that. Okay. Okay, we got that. Hey, I don't um, know if this needed to be in the minutes, but it's something that I wrote down and I lost, and that is when different people are taking the minutes. I'm not sure what what month I'm supposed to be taking the minutes. Did anybody write that down? I um, did, yes I did, yes I did. Did you, good. And uh, just hang on a second. Okay. Step into the back room, all three feet away. And Jean, the way it's set up now, Jenny is, Jenny is on tonight. Um, Chris would, would do them in May. And the Lawson team will come back in June. 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 Hi, Chris. Hello. <laughs> so, uh, so you have to. Chris, I like your top. <laughs> Thank you, Talbots. Oh, look at that, twins. <laughs> really bad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we we started to move, Chris, and we we have just approved the meeting minutes. Uh, did anyone have any other comments other than South Main Street and 611? Nope. Sure. All right, everybody okay with them? We'll let, we'll let them roll. Um, number two uh, item on the agenda is an update on the board and commission reports. Nancy, I wanna thank you for the plug that you gave us for doing them at the Board of Supervisors meeting. I appreciate that. Um, and just so everybody knows, the, re the 11 reports are done. Uh, I don't know that they've been released yet to the website, but we are going to start showing them at Board of Supervisors meeting, as I understand the plan. The first three will be shown on the May 4th meeting. And then I think we're going to go three a month for the next four months. Mm -hmm. and, the chair has uh, decided to alternate between the end of the L, three from the end of the alphabet, three from the beginning of the alphabet, back and forth. So the bad news in that is that tab is up in the first group. <laughs> <laughs> the good news of that is it's all done. It's not like there's work in front of us. I mm -hmm. just have to get it out. Uh, we do have to probably re-render those, uh, Aaron, as we talked about, uh, to, get the, to get the bit rate down, but. To get the what? We have we have to we have to lower the bit rate. Uh, I'll have to talk to you about that because they they uh, okay. our encoder decided it didn't like them. Anyway, um, it's a, it's a relatively straightforward thing to do. So they'll be they'll all be coming out very very soon, and that will be the end of that project for this year. Um, any questions on that? aspect of things. Oh, sure. Okay, moving on, programming projects, planning and next steps. The first item that's on the um, agenda there is, is something that we talked about at the last get together, uh, last meeting. And I sent to all of you last week in the uh, same email with the agenda and, and the meeting notes. And I don't know if anyone had a chance to look at it, but this is principally for the benefit of all the new players and frankly, everybody who hasn't had a chance to see what the 
uh, the government access channel use policy is. So this gives you a flavor for what it was that, that we have in mind by having this channel. The policy, I don't have the signed version, uh, but this is the one, uh, a draft of it from September 25th of 2008. I don't remember there being any changes to it that were made, but um, if you do you all have a copy of it or if yes, you like, yes, uh, I could share the screen and I could put it up on the screen if you want. Okay. But there's there's only a few really salient points. First of all, do note that this is written in legal language. It's, this is a draft from the solicitor's office. So there's a lot of verbiage here. But it gets down to pretty much the essence of it is right in that very first paragraph, the policy statement. First off, if anything goes wrong with the channel, it's the responsibility of the township manager. I just want to make that very clear. So if you, if you have any problems. <laughs> that is a hint, hint. <laughs> always, or my designee. <laughs> oh, Aaron, Ed. I don't, I don't see that in here, but anyway. All right. Oh, oh, yeah. I've, I've asked and so many times to learn how to run this so I could sit in the back and not have to be out front. <laughs> yeah. And mm -hmm. and basically the, the tab board is is able mm -hmm. to make recommendations about all of that, uh, how, how we use our channel. Now, this is all about the TV channel. This doesn't have much of anything to do with the website, but this is what we wrote when we when we started out on television. Um. The town, it is designed to provide township residents with direct non-editorial information concerning government deliberations, services, programs, and activities, and also to provide educational and public informational materials sponsored by Doylestown Township. Now that opens a lot of doors. There's a lot of things we can do with it, but it is very clear that we can use the channel to, as it, as it says in section two, paragraph six, to provide more extensive information on selected township topics. So after we get done with meetings that, that we can show, uh, if there are topics that are a particular moment for, for the residents, um, uh, we, we do have the right to, to put programming together for that. It can come from lots of places. Um, it can come from live coverage of meetings, can come from recorded meetings, which are played back. Um, staff can put programming together. We can get programming from outside. We can put on public service announcements that is government oriented. Um, and we are allowed to put on bulletin board type stuff, which is what we do from midnight till six in the morning. Everything is slides and those slides are also shown in between video programs during the day. So when we talk about a video metric of 80% video content, we're talking about the broadcast day from 6 a.m. in the morning to 12 midnight and we're saying in those 18 hours, 80% of the time is filled with video content and 20% of the time are filled with these billboard generated um, uh, slides. And I, I, don't, I don't remember, Aaron, exactly how many we have, but there's probably 60 or 70 slides in the sequence uh, covering lots of different departments and topics. And there's been a fair amount of effort off, off and on again over the years to keep them current. Uh, they're fairly current at the, at the present time. Um, there are some other little nuggets in here. Uh, for example, I'm not allowed to use, uh, utilize the channel for personal gain. That's in section five. So I, I can't sell my services on, on the channel and nobody can. And we're not, uh, not allowed to have any promotional material or deal with religious beliefs or religious philosophies. Um, I guess also of important political programming in section eight, page four, 
Uh, if we're going to have anything that is political in nature, it needs to cover all sides of an issue. All candidates who are part and parcel of that would have to be part of it. So that there can't be any taking of sides in anything that is politically oriented. Uh, and this is sensitive enough that, that these kinds of things uh, the Board of Supervisors uh, looks at and decides. So when we talk about a League of Women Voters uh, judges uh, panel, for example, that almost got to the Board of Supervisors before it was yanked and then decided to cancel it. So uh, it was following the right process uh, to, to get permission to, to actually do it. But if we had done it, all the candidates would have had to be present. We would do no editing. We would do no, no, no nothing to the material other than present it. Um, um, can I just ask a question just generally on that? If let's say you had all candidates who were uh, uh, invited, but one or two decided not to attend, would that would that stymie the thing, or that that uh, would still allow it to go forward? In other words, let's say five out of the seven judge judge uh, candidates decided to attend, and two of them had scheduling conflicts or whatnot. Or do you I don't I don't actually know the answer to that question, so Stephanie. Do you? Don't. I mean, we're not. Typically, we're not the ones who host something like that. I mean, we've only done it a couple of times, and it's been through the League of Women Voters, which is sort of a neutral organization, um, you know, to represent any and all candidates. But you make a good point, Art. Um, yeah, I mean, that creates possibility that if that occurred, we might not um, show it, you know, um, kind of thing. Well, it just says they must have an equal opportunity, opportunity. to participate. So, I mean, that may cover it. So as long yeah. as they were given, I mean, to not include someone deliberately, no, that's not right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, we've, like I said, in all the years since 08, um, I think we've only had one or two where the League of Women Voters has, you know, done something like they did um, with the Congressional Forum. Because usually they're they're not here, and been here. They've been at um, either Del Val or Pine Run in a bigger, like a much much bigger setting. Right. So if it were non-COVID, um, and my guess is is that you know when things open up and they can have a thousand people over at Del Val again, they're in the auditorium. They're going to go back there. Okay. You know. Yeah, I was, so, I was just curious on. Yeah. Oh, that, uh, what what the viewpoint of the, the general viewpoint was on, on that's all. Yeah, like I said, I don't even know. I mean, I know we did the congressional one, and then the the judge. Well, the one interesting didn't thing take is, place. The congressional one, we we produced the the congressional one, but it never showed on our TV channel because mm -hmm. we didn't have the rights to it. Uh, right. Right. PCN, the the Pennsylvania Cable Network, had the rights to it, and they said uh, you can't show this until we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, by that time, it was kind of like, forget it. So <laughs> it was too late. <laughs> yeah. So really, I mean, we really haven't we really done haven't had, one. We really I mean, haven't had one. We point. really haven't had one. Mm -hmm. so. okay. But it's a perfect medium for it. And, mm -hmm. it really, and, it, and, it, and it's a good way, if we were to do it, mm -hmm. that we could put it both web streaming into our mm -hmm. community and all over the place. Plus, we could also put it on our TV channel, and you you really would have an opportunity to educate the res the residents if they chose mm -hmm. to be educated on it. So that's it's it's worth keeping in the back of our mind if 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 the opportunity comes up again. Um, uh, the, the, another lawyer question. Let's do it. Um, do you think it's a time to uh, to uh, modify the resolution to include web based? material, I mean, a short definition section to be added to this thing that it shall include, you know, uh, social social media such as, but, uh, but not limited to one, two, three, four, five, you know, just to make just to make this resolution all inclusive in the future. So it doesn't have to be amended. Again, we actually have a second policy which relates to web 
the web streaming. I haven't looked at it in a while, okay. uh, but there might be there might be some benefits of combining them. One thing that is different is that the rights to material are completely different on the web than they are on TV channel. So uh, you, you get permission for one place, you don't necessarily have it, have from, it from another. Sure. But yeah, we could look at that. Yeah, only only for, I'm I'm thinking of in terms of general policy requirements not on use but uh, yeah. just something as a as a as a combined thing because you know, technology has shifted and changed and you want uh, since 08 so yeah this this was written before there was such a thing as social media yeah yeah um, I guess section nine has one important comment in it which is that no township meeting cable cast shall be edited or subjected to editorial comment so we have we are required to to show it as is, warts and all. Um, what, what whatever it is is what it is. And we we can take out technical problems, let's say, but nothing that that uh, gets to gets to the meaning of what's said. And nothing to the extent possible. We just go we just go from beginning to end. Yeah. Uh, I think we pretty much hit. The big stuff here, um, we're not allowed to, uh, on in section 10, we're not allowed to endorse, market, or advertise an issue, candidate, specific person, company, or brand name of a product for consumer use. And in that sense, we have paid, I paid fairly close attention to what um, Channel 12 PBS does because they're subject to the same sort of restrictions. And they certainly have found a way to have sponsors for programs uh, who get their names and a certain amount of, uh, a certain amount of juice up on the screen before you cut to the programming material itself. So if you, if you keep this thought in the back of your head and you're looking at channel 12 sometime, think about what I just said, because they, there is a way put stuff on there, but it has to be very, very quiet. And it's yes. funny, I was, you hit the point, I was thinking, you know, we're seeing some of the public private partnerships that are happening, just like you said. And so maybe something to be mindful moving forward for exactly that reason. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we have the, right, our, our band shells sponsored and, you know, we do have partners and they would love, we'd love to see themselves on our TV, you know, and mm -hmm. if we want to go into, and Stephanie, this is a question for you, are other townships going into relationships with partners? You know, is that part of the negotiation that they're on our TV? Like, thank, even if it's a thank you for our partners, I don't know. So I'm just. Like the Jack Thompson board of supervisors meeting. So. No, I, don't. I don't think we could do that. No, no. <laughs> but, I don't think we could do no. that. I mean, there's a lot of partnerships, Nancy. I mean, a lot of the various um, businesses sponsor events and um, band shells, like in Ben Salem, theirs is sponsored by someone as well. So that's not uncommon. Um, you know, and I don't think it's, you know, where you, one of the things it references here is copyrights and things like that. So videotaping bands on the, you know, you might be able to do clips and stuff, but to do the whole thing, you know, that's where we have to be careful, have to be careful. that, you know, we, we don't violate any copyright and everything and reshow something. So we have to be, other than that, we have to have the permissions and everything. Well, let's, let's tuck that away and keep it in mind because yeah, I think we want yeah. those kind of opportunities and, Mm -hmm. uh, and and the question yeah. becomes, you know, how many people are watching the the channel? You know, that's kind of that unknown as well. Yeah, it's a little hard for us to sell it to advertisers <laughs> yeah. anyway. Because I mean, it's not ABC or you know Hallmark Channel or something. It's you know the cable government. All right. Does channel. anyone have any other questions on, on this policy? This is, this is the policy that's been in existence since 2008. Um, I'll, I'll get the web one out and we'll 
uh, assuming I can get my hands on it, well, I can share that with you. Paul. Okay. That, that, that sounds great because it seems like we're moving more in the direction of web um, as, as being the, what, what people look at more frequently now than actually the TV. So um, it, would be, it would be just nice to take a look and compare them. Great, and I think everybody should, all this group should, should know what's, what's in it. Yeah. Okay, going once, going twice. Any other questions? No, thanks. You. All right, we are up to the Virginia and Aaron show on the mission and vision document. Um, it's done. <laughs> Um, I would have sent it to you, but I was recovering. <laughs> Is that why you're I'm sorry. I was, you know, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. it, it's done. It's Good. Done. I'll send it to you in a little bit. <laughs> okay, so we'll circulate that for everybody and, and everyone can comment on it. And uh, then yeah. we have a robust discussion at the next meeting. You combined everything into one, if I remember yes. what's gonna happen. Yeah, there's like a table of contents and it's, it's readable, I think. How many, how many pages? <laughs> Five. Uh, Five. Yeah, it's not too long. It's, it's cool. Yeah, we have it up as a Google Doc too. So everyone can- Oh, know. actually that might, might have been better to just send out. <laughs> that way, if you wanna make edits live. You can just do yeah. that. Return right. on changes. Well, and we'll ask you to please send it to us and we'll we'll discuss it in detail at the next meeting. All right. Okay. Um, well, it looks like I have a redundant item. Boards and commissions, reviews. We already talked about that. Um, Art, anything on the corona? Uh, I'm sorry. I've been up to my eyeballs in, the, in some other projects and I just haven't been able to get to that. All right. This is gonna go fast now. Chamber chat videos, I have done nothing and I've decided I'm not going to, unless somebody else is interested in it. I think the, I think it's, we'll just take a pause on that one and see what happens. We discussed it at some length at the last meeting and I, I, I certainly got the sense that nobody thought we should be putting commercials on and this policy we've just worked our way through sort of emphasizes the same thing. So mm -hmm. that, that kind of did it for me. Okay. Any objection to that? None at all. All right. Municipal authority. Um, I'm sure they're busy uh, getting water into the Pebble Ridge area. So I haven't heard anything from Keith Haas uh, I know he's enthusiastic about doing it, but uh, I haven't heard anything at this point. Ted, is that different than, that's different than the presentation that we'll, yes. the board will see, right? This is yes. more like in the field videos and like actual action shots, so to speak. In a way it's, a, uh, it, it would be an educational video to give potential customers a sense of what services they provide. It, it goes beyond saying, what did we do last year? What are we doing this year? Mm -hmm. like, what's the quality of their water? I'm not exactly sure what all would be in it, but mm -hmm. it would be more of a, this is our mission in life, you know, sort of thing. If, if they're a separate entity, does that mean they're advertising on our TV channel then? Is that an issue? I've received no payment for it. Well. Stephanie? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, they're, they are a separate entity, but still we, they are public service and another governmental entity. So we could go through the policy again and make sure, but I, I mean, I don't think it would be any different than, I mean, we used to do the who we are and what we do, um, sort of table chats, if you will, with me sitting there um, with, well, Dick John at the time, or the planning commission chair and the consultant and talking about what does the planning commission do? What, you know, what is um, one with the police department um, neighborhood watch do, you know, 
but all of those commissions and the police department are us. They're right. Mm -hmm. they, we I mean, some on the, the water authority back then too. Only um, because it's been brought up in school. recent times. They, they do provide water to the township, and the town and their their employees are township employees. So if we were going to be out talking about safe drinking water, you know, or public water, you know, I mean, it would have to be. Um, I'd like to know what their outline is and what they're yeah, intending to, see what to share. To say. You might just yeah. want to find out what they're going to talk about. Just yeah, because they're governmental. Yeah. You don't want to create more. I'm just trying to be proactive on that since mm -hmm. it's been going around and around a little bit. So. Oh, really? Yeah, I appreciate that. And, and um, I don't know exactly what it was he intended to do about it, but I know it's more of a sales document than, than his report is. That's the sense I had of it uh, from what he had to say. But why don't, well, we'll, we'll find out what it is he wants to do and then we'll bounce that against the policies and have another discussion. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. And if I don't press on them, it probably won't get done. So True. there's another way we could deal with it. Um, trails and park videos, as I as I indicated the last time, uh, is here so that we can talk about um, the the work that the trails people are doing. Uh, and see if there's any way that we can help out with some of the parks and trails videos we already have. And uh, I don't know where we've gotten to on that. Certainly we're not out of COVID yet, but we're getting to the time of year when we should be working on this. So is there any news at all on the interactive map? Um, they're still working on it. You know, we have a meeting coming up this month. Um, they were, they have the consultant working on it and everything. So, you know, hopefully we'll see some some updates and movement on it. Okay. I, I was gonna say the dog park, they're doing something called dog bites, B-Y-T-E-S, where they can just send out little messages, you know, about the survey or tips or, Keeping people informed, they're just trying to be um, connect people mm -hmm. with small bits of information. I think it's either going to be on email and possibly maybe some in the. I think they were trying to get something in our newsletter, and I don't know if they'll ask Karen to put maybe something on the website once in a while. I think that's the extent of Dog Park. And I yeah, but they were going to do a video. I mean, I think they tried. I don't know, Didn't, like sort uh, of how to. Um, you know, now that you're a dog park member, let me show you how you access, you know, here's a lady with her dog walking up and this is my fob and I fob in and, you know, I make sure that my, you know, and it was sort of like mm -hmm. a step-by-step -step, um, video I thought they were gonna do. And I think Kathy took some video with like her phone or someone else from the committee. This was a couple years ago, they, you know, pre-COVID and they, it you know, sort of um, picture yourself with the phone and video and the dog and the gate and <laughs> like a bag of groceries and everything. You know, it's like you need two people, you know, someone who's doing the video, maybe even three, you know, that someone is the actor, if you will, with the dog and then someone else who's doing the video um, shooting it and, and shooting it and talking and you know who's the, the they, voice they of in general to be rather put off by the process I mean they are or overwhelmed by the process maybe maybe if this new draft document comes mm -hmm. out well right. uh, they could be one of the first groups we we get it yeah. to, to see if this is at all helpful to them they were also trying to put their orientation um, create a video or a Zoom or a presentation so that so that may roll into the presentation piece too. Yeah, know? they have a regular orientation session. I guess it's a couple times yeah. a month. But yeah. They're looking to do go through a sequence of slides that they have had for a long time. They were talking about making it a video so whoever came in 
just had to push a button, but then they convinced themselves that somehow or other it had a change too too often, and so they'd have to do the video over again. I I, I don't I don't know. It, it's it's not a big problem for us to set up the the computer and have them run through the, through the presentation. So it hasn't been up for discussion recently. I'll tell you that. Okay. All right. Well, why don't uh, once we get this right up together, uh, yeah. let's let's make them one of the first people that, that get a copy of it. They, they in parks, of course, and trails. And okay, um, Aaron, you want to talk about school district? Oh, school district. Um, yep. So we partnered with uh, Central Bucks. They did a concert under Main Street program. We recently took that and uh, put it up on our channel. Um, it aired this last Thursday at uh, 9 p.m. And I believe it went off without a hitch and we're looking forward to having some uh, more in that series to uh, update. It did not go off without a hitch the week before and that is because the file uh, was in an illegal format from the perspective of our, of our encoder. So our encoder basically said, no, 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 you're not gonna show this. So yeah, and that's, that's similar to the, uh, the logs. Uh, that's a similar issue with the board presentations. It's, um, it's a couple of peculiarities with the um, particular piece of technology. And it, it's very particular about formatting and um, other specifications on the videos. All right, so we so so you reformatted it. We tested it. We ran in a test slot, and it ran on as it should at nine o'clock on Thursday. And what was it? I missed what you said it was. Um, for that particular video, um, everything was good with it except for the actual size of the video. It didn't like the oh, resolution that it was at. What's the program? There, that was uh, the CB Cares. Right, oh, they're musical is, groups that perform. This is basically high school musical groups. They um, did their own kind of little YouTube video with a bunch of, uh, I think, four or five performances um, that they edited themselves. <laughs> is that going to be every Thursday at nine o'clock for now on? It will be right now. Excellent. Thank you so much, Aaron. I know there was a little bit of detective work. I appreciate you um, yeah. figuring that puzzle out. So great. No problem. You and you do. Do they? So here's my question, Aaron and Ed. When CB Cares um, or whoever's doing the video of the groups in the future, do they need to put it in a different format, or when they get it to us, do we just need to convert it now to the newer format to make our encoder happy? So they share it to uh, not YouTube, but a different um, video sharing network. We are able to grab it from there for free. Um, they have given me permission to do that. So basically, going forward, we'll have to take what they have posted for that video encoder and just basically change the um, sizing. So we'll have to do a quick recode. Um, okay. It's about three clicks in a little bit of time. Yeah, I, I, this, once we found out what was wrong, the, the, the repair was not a big deal. Is that something that should be put into the document that's going to be published about the size of the file and MP4 and all that kind of stuff? It is definitely something we can yeah. we can add to it, but it's probably more than most people need to know. Um, and you'll need to have some relatively high end software to make these changes. Uh, well, I'm just I'm just saying if you if uh, if you're talking to folks like at uh, at the school who have a sophistication on the equipment they're using. Um, maybe it maybe it would just should be an addendum, you know. No, I think you I think you're absolutely right. Certainly, our preference would be to always get it in a format that it's immediately usable, and you can't get it that way unless you tell them what what it needs to be. Yeah, so that I, would I be nice. But, but at the same point, you're having to share a one to two gig file, um, which is prohibitive. Right, it means you have to do a physical handoff. Yeah, the only way we could get it exactly the way we wanted is, is sneaker net. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, that, that's always a problem. It, you know, 
It is, but uh, I'm just thinking that if we're um, asking groups or groups are going to be doing things, it would be just a good idea just to, uh, even if it is technical, is, um, if they have that, if they have an understanding of that stuff, then maybe it's just to put it out there. Yep. And, and if they don't listen to it, okay, that's fine. But, uh, uh, but at least you know, we know that if someone has the technical sophistication to look at it, make it easier on our end, then why not? Just, it's just a thought. You don't have to go with it. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Is it a limitation on our software or, or our, our, or what we have? Or is it something that it's the handoff? I'm just curious. It's a particular characteristic of the encoder we have that takes the video and puts it on the air, that it demands certain technical characteristics be, be within certain specifications. And, it's, words, not, it's not unusual, but it's a little tighter than some. In other words, there's parameters. Yeah, there's just parameters. That, that's all. We just want to keep it. Is things. it something you need to fix in the budget program process? I'm just, is no, it, no. No. Okay. just it's, not, it's not, not something that needs to be fixed. It's just a matter of getting it right in the handoff. I mean, the, the format they sent us to us in was weird. And that is, it's a 16 by nine picture, meaning it's a widescreen picture, but they sent it with a, a, a side with ratio instead of 1080. It was really kind of crazy. So it really shouldn't have worked anywhere, but it apparently works. Computers are very much more forgiving than, than expensive video equipment. So anyway, I, I don't think we need to fix it in the budget process. We'll just, we might have to buy some software to make sure we can um, do the translation. And Gene, that, that package that you were using to re-render stuff, that might be one that we would want to consider, can consider. Though Aaron's got one that he uses that he's perfectly happy to share with us. At least he looks like he's happy. I do it. Can't, <laughs> can't tell. Can't no, 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 it's relatively easy. <laughs> All right. Um, where does this go from here, school district wise? What's next? Uh, My understanding is there's going to be more of these performances. I have no idea because of COVID. So I will um, reach out to CB Cares and just see. If where they are in the process, I my understanding was they're going to be more than one, so we'll see. Please make, please make sure that they know it's actually running. I just sent her a note as we were speaking. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Very good. All right. Anybody have any other programming projects they want to bring up at this time? Well, the, well uh, is, is there any? Uh, I understand that uh, there was going to be a meeting on the uh, proposed roundabout. Um, does, uh, is there any thought of making, uh, having uh, a uh, short program or inf infomercial about, about that roundabout that can be put out to the township, you know, as, as a program, like a five minute thing? Um, Aaron, don't we have that information up on the website already? Okay. So up on the website, um, we do have a blog post that you can see at the bottom of the home page and it contains links to their last presentation, their slides, as well as um, they published an FAQ that came out of that meeting as well. And then on YouTube, we also have a copy of the meeting as it happened as well. Okay, because all right, so that's the last, uh, I haven't checked in, in the last week what's up, so. That's okay. about, and then we also it's have something on, oh, sorry. Too many people talking. So we also have something on EPAs um, as well, right, Aaron, on the ChemFab site in the borough. Yes, we um, we place those on the EAC's page um, down at the bottom of their page. You can get to their public meeting as well as their um, their slides as well for the ChemFab Superfund site there in the borough. Okay. Um, they're just starting construction this week on the water treatment plant that'll run for 10 years. Cool. The, you, you do have a germ of an idea, though, Art, with, which is as the roundabout project takes shape, 
I mean, what we've just told you is go to the website and spend the next three hours looking at all the wonderful material we've given you. I mean, is there a need for, is there a need for a five or 10 minute quick look at this project that would be made available to the residents? That's something we yeah, that, that's Good kind of what I was thinking, like a top of the mountain view of something you know, doesn't have to get into. Yeah, I don't think we know enough at this point to. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah I would work with PennDOT and their consultants on something like that would not be something I would want us to do. It's their project on their roadways, just happens yeah. to be in the township. I think it would be best if, to do as it. they get closer into the project and have plans and, and all that, that, yeah, we can ask them if they could, you know, maybe give us a five minute video. Give it, you, I mean, we may take the video, but let them, you know, help put something together. Yeah. So, uh, I think I, that's I, a good I, idea, Art. Yeah. It might be a pen doc pro, uh, program, but it's, it's definitely affects the township and the immediate area because mm -hmm. it's on the land here. So sure. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let me just write that on here. Sure. Don't forget it. I guess every time I lean forward like that, you guys get a great real good look of, my, of your forehead. Of my, my forehead. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. That guy's got a lot of wrinkles. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pen dot. All right. I'll sit back. There we go. Okay. Um, social media. We're up to that. Um, I, Aaron put together two reports or got together two reports, which I emailed to everybody yep. this afternoon. Did everyone get them? Yeah, I got them up on my screen. Okay. I, I can get, we can put them up if you want, but right. what, what would you like to do? Aaron, you want to talk about them? Yeah, so the reports I put together are for quarter one of 2021. Um, basically, the social media um, uh, continues to grow at about the usual rate that we've seen, um, plus 90 or so, you know, Facebook followers, and then about nine additional on Twitter, which tends to be about the growth pattern um, that we've been seeing over the last year or so. Um, I think one of the more interesting things to come out of the reports is what the top posts were. Um, for Twitter, it was an EAC post about bluebirds nesting that ended up being their top post. Hmm. Um, so oh. it kind of showed how much that that involvement was there, um, and kind of the audience that, that's there. And the other side was Crime Watch, of course, um, for road conditions. <laughs> Okay. In terms of the web, website, we're doing pretty good on the website. Um, we're getting a fairly large number of new visitors. Um, it tends to be skewing now more towards portable electronics as opposed to people on their computers. Um, that's a good trend. Uh, it shows that our website is scaling correctly um, to you know iPads, phones, and, and whatnot. Hmm. And our, our dwell time is decently long. Um, about a 54, 56% engagement rate, if I recall. Um, you know, they spend, I think, almost two minutes at, um, uh, on the webpage, which is, is pretty good. Um, I also think we have some ex expats in there. If you look closely at that map, you'll see, um, I think, uh, one in Africa, one in Australia, you know, one in uh, Thailand. Uh, it was interesting to see that we do get hits outside of the U.S., which I was surprised where is, at. Where is Oceana? <laughs> I don't recognize that term. It's a bar, Dave says. I think that's Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> People on vacation, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, very interesting, very interesting. Um, hmm. So we have 4375 users of which 4,000 are new. That's pretty amazing. 
I think that shows that people are basically able to go to our website and get the information they need the first time around. <laughs> and and these and these are statistics between um, middle of March and, and April 11th, the new users? No, the last three months. <laughs> April, yeah, one quarter. Oh, okay, sorry, looking at the wrong one. Can I ask a question? Do we monitor our phone calls coming into the township? Is there any correlation to the number of people looking on our website and then calling the township by any chance? Can we figure that out? Or is that too complicated? A little complicated. Uh, I mean, some people will sure. say it, but I mean, there you have to remember there's three, four lines coming in, you know, on the, that they're grabbing and transferring and, you know, but people will say I was looking on the website and, you know, right looking for this and I, I you know, I want to sign up for dog park or, you know, I was trying to find, you know, something on a code or something like that. So, you know, so they're doing, they're dealing with that out front mm -hmm. on any given oh, plus yeah. the people coming in. Yeah. So, you know, it depends on whether people will say they were online. What do you, uh, what do you, I'm, I'm intrigued by your question. What, what are you hoping to learn from that, Nancy? Um, and I've, this is no secret. I've had this conversation with Stephanie um, on our, because I'm an information geek, as you all know, um, on our website, there's just one general number and info at versus other townships. There's, you know, you can, you know, reach different people like the code department. There's an email attached to someone's name or and I didn't know if, I was just trying to figure out that correlation. So if I have a conversation with other supervisors, you know, should our website be a little more transparent with that contact information to people for roads, the people for like paying your bill or that kind of thing versus now we don't really have that. That's what yeah, I Well, actually, actually we do. Actually we do. We have it in yeah, and two I, separate Aaron, places. Aaron, give me a second here, if mm -hmm. you don't mind, because I want you to give the details, but a couple of things. One, Nancy, in the newsletter, three times a year, there's a list of all of the um, contact people in the newsletter. And then Aaron's going to explain where on the website that information is as well. So go ahead, Aaron. Okay. I didn't realize that, Aaron, Nancy, when you and I talked previously, I was like thinking you wanted it on the front page. And I'm like, I know it's not on the front page, but Aaron, go ahead and sorry. Okay. Um, as Stephanie pointed out in the newsletter, we do publish a full staff directory. And if someone goes to the web page and clicks on the contact us or contact button, they will take them to a form, a page, and the top of the page will yes have that uh, info and the 9915 number. But if they scroll down, it will have a full staff directory with their numbers and emails as well. And there's also a staff directory page, which is separate which again was that information as well. I'm sorry, I'm looking right now. So I see so Dave do Tomko. I don't see a number or an email for him. No, I'm mistaken then. There is the names, but there's no uh, email for them. Well, correct? I believe that's also done to help filter it through the front office. Um, to, to keep staff um, focused on their tasks as well. Oh, 100%. <laughs> My question was, for instance, maybe it's the person who supports director of operations or who supports parks. They're the ones who got those emails funneled. I was just trying to- yeah. But if you go to like finance, if you click on finance, you have contacts with um, email addresses, names and email addresses, including Ed's. But you might want to change that because it's the Comcast one. <laughs> it's under about us. Contact us. No departments. Uh huh. Oh, under administration. Yeah. No, under. Um, but just as an example, under finance. Okay, and then yeah, code, codes has the same thing. I don't it know about just... admin. Maybe not on admin. No, we don't. You have the main numbers and info to come through on admin. Right. But um, parks. How about street roads? Do we have roads? Sorry, I'm going to ask real quick since I got you now. We're looking at it. I'm on. Um, do, 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 I got to 
I had to bring my thing down so I can get the department. We, yeah. I had to bring my thing up. Yeah, because Caitlin's updated with. Um, Public works, you have the photo and you have contacts. So again, filtered through the, and you know, you got to remember that, I mean, they don't have their emails. We could certainly put them there, but the guys are out on the road too. So it's right. easier to, you know, call the front office and they can get to them a lot faster on cell phone and things like that. But, it gives, trying, the, but yeah. it gives the names so they can call the main number and say, I want to talk to Paul Gar about road superintendent. I want to talk to Chris Mason about parks yeah. or Dave Tomko. It's just if you navigate the website, mm -hmm. like if you want to report a pothole, it's Dulles on Township Roadways and it's just info at. And then you sort of, you sort of have to know who to look for. I guess that's my point. Well, but it's then but info at is going to get it to curious. me, to Dave, to Aaron. They know who to get the call to or the email to right away. That's the whole thing. And that's looked at but several times a day. Right, but someone has to shift through those emails and then pass yeah. them to the right person, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, but they know okay, who so to that's... shift it to. That's the whole okay. thing. Because I can tell you at night, people will call and they'll leave me messages. Okay, they'll get through the voicemail and they'll just find township manager and I'll come in in the morning and I'll have voicemails for things that have nothing, you know, for their permit, for their water bill, has nothing, you know, so I'm just forwarding that, then I'm sitting here forwarding on several items. So, I mean, I want us to be efficient and effective in, in, in that communication as well. Um, if it helps to add our, our emails there, we can do that. Um, but, you know, I know from 30, 40 years of experience that, you know, we get a lot of, you know, people aren't sure. And a lot of times the front office can be extremely helpful in kind of vetting. I mean, we had a um, person on the phone one time, or actually a couple of times, I should say, that was going on and on about the street and, and plowing. And the front office was able to realize that they were not calling from Doylestown oh, yeah. Township, Pennsylvania. They were calling from Doylestown, Ohio. Oh my God. And we had in, in a bad snowstorm, which we were having snow and they were having snow. We ended up with probably four calls coming in that day, all from Doylestown, Ohio, all upset that their road hadn't been plowed. And yet we're like the crews out there, tell us your street. And they were telling us the streets and we're like, that's not our streets. And so the front office knows our streets. They know, you know, I mean, I took a number of calls one time for lace leaf everybody was upset on lace leaf and i'm like you're calling from buckingham township you know and proceeded to give them the phone number for buckingham township and help them out that's one nice thing about having a, a live person be able to you know address that with people so certainly just a, we, i'm just trying to i'm i'm a streamliner so i'm just mm -hmm. trying to see yeah so we can that's do that more but there's an i think it's there i think we can just add we can add, you know, some additional information and, you know, I just don't want to overwhelm department heads either. Well, no. I'm not looking to put the department's heads potentially it could be, however, that's anyway, we could talk another day. Okay. Let's. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, anything else on social media, Mr. Aaron? No. All right. New building system operations report. Acoustic remediation project. <laughs> your favorite, your favorite topic. Your favorite topic. So let's see. We'll talk about that. If so. you ever went, went to a ball game and you watched people up to, to hit, you could you could see someone get two strikes. We've done two RFPs. The second one went out a couple of weeks ago, and we got no bids. So we are. I, I, I can tell you at this point, we've conferred with the solicitor. He thinks we've done everything we can do. He knows that we have a contact or two in the industry. So why don't you pick up the phone and call a contact and then make sure that we can get quotes for the same product from multiple sources. We've already decided given where we are at this point that we will, we will install it ourselves. So we're just buying material. 
So uh, I reached out to the uh, principal contact we have, and he he was one that didn't respond because he read the RFP a different way than we intended it. But he is about to send us a fresh price quote. I expect to get that this week, and then we'll be able to get off and get running. But we unfortunately have had to dilly dally around to get to the point where we can actually in fact say okay tom we're going to give you some business and here's what we here's what we want and so forth and so on so i think we're we are creeping ever closer and we're, i think we're finished with the landmine part of it wow so that's what that's all about um in the operations side we did have some suggestions from the supervisors as to things we could do to make the, the integration with Zoom and our meetings a little more user-friendly. Uh, these are things we, we did put into effect and at the last supervisor's meeting last week. Uh, so all of the supervisor's windows were poked up to the top and locked there so they couldn't fall down into the sea of everybody else who was on the on the call. And we also made sure that their names were spelled correctly and that they had the word supervisor after them. So they were identified and they were they were nailed to the top of the screen. Um, and it actually worked. <laughs> I, I had to chase a couple around, but uh, for the most part that they stayed where they were supposed to. So the one thing we have yet, we're working on the volume. Uh, Nancy, I haven't forgotten that you can't, you're having difficulty hearing the, um, the Zoom participants when you're sitting in the room listening to it. So I'll have to boost that, that volume a little bit on that particular feed, but uh, I haven't forgotten it. Um, just a general question. When, the, when we're finally out from under um, the, uh, the COVID and uh, we're allowed to start back up again, is there any thought about whether we're gonna to continue to record on Zoom, with, even if we have live meetings ourselves as, a, uh, as TAB or any other organization in, in the meeting room to, as, a public, uh, as a public service or will we just go straight back just to uh, minutes? as the notice to the public. Well, I know I haven't discussed that with Stephanie at this point, because I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm of the, the belief that uh, Zoom and its equivalent are here to stay, that people are finding this as it's both a pain in the butt and it's convenient. And so I'm not sure everybody's going to be all that anxious to come roaring back for an in-person meeting. I mean, we have a couple of new people here I've never met in person that I think we should have at least one in-person meeting. Yeah. And, but but um, I'm, I would be surprised to find that we didn't end up with a hybrid of, of uh, in-person attendees and, and, and the Zoom attendees going forward. Now, whether if we are all in person, I don't know what the answer to that question is. It's it is pretty convenient to record it that way. And we do have at least one of our conference rooms outfitted so that we could record it and put it up kind of as a Zoom call. Uh, so technically, I think we could make that happen. Uh, conference room B would need to be outfitted for that. Well, I'm just trying to think Legally, a little bit outside the box. Legally, you don't have to, though. As, as, have. As, you don't have to, though. I've Sorry. talked to the solicitor. Legally, you don't have to. If you're having a meeting and everybody's in person, we can use Zoom, say you're out of, out of town, but you wanna participate. Um, per the milk board case, the um, member could use to participate via the phone and we could put you on a speaker phone as long as you could hear us and we could hear you, you could participate in the meeting. You know, We could make the Zoom available for you as a, as a member, but the meeting is in person. And we do not have to legally say open it to the general public, for example. Okay, I'm just trying to think um, a little bit a little bit ahead as we start moving 
out of uh, the, the severe conditions we've been experiencing in the last year, you know, uh, moving, moving ahead. Uh, I, don't ex I didn't expect to get an answer. I was just kind of putting it out there as a, for something to think about. That's well, let's something. ask this. I mean, are, have we gotten any public comments? I mean, not necessarily on the TAB meeting, but all committees are now up there after they have their meeting. They, they're up on the YouTube channel with their meeting. Are we getting any public comments that people are watching them? Do we have any evidence I of I mean, outside of board members uh, or staff, I mean, I know Aaron's watched a lot of them to become more familiar. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, I Nancy, I don't know, have you heard from residents that they're going and watching, you know, no, the, the I, tab I like or the EAC or the dog park video, you know, the right. recording? Like like I wanted to attend the park and rec meeting, but it wasn't on Zoom. Because they were meeting in person. They were yeah. meeting in person, right? Mm -hmm. So the only way for me to participate is to call in if I'm unavailable. Right. Mm -hmm. At this point. So, I mean, right. that's, my only question is, does there have to be consistency among the, the committees? Like if you offer it for one committee, does that have to be the same for another? I don't know. Not necessarily. I mean, it's really kind of up to the committee. I mean, look at the board of supervisors. You know, from day one, we had, you know, we, we were all set to have complete Zoom meetings, and yet people started showing up from, you know, Barbara's like, oh, I'm going to be there in person, and that changed our whole um, yeah, situation, that, that, remember, Ed? So, yeah, I mean, and, and, yeah, and, 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 and Dan's like, yeah, I'll be there, and somebody else was like, so we ended up with, you know, three here, two home, other people, you know, and two here, three, you know, so we've, um, we've adapted, but, the, you know, and, and I mean, it makes it more complicated because we've got the, we're also doing the, the live, the live stream and the cable channel and the zoom. And, you know, I'm, I'm still glad that Ed is still here helping. It's a lot of work. I ain't, no, I ain't, no, Aaron I ain't. and all the staff in there, you know, um, it, uh, it's been, it's been interesting, you know, all well, the other, I, I think we, but yeah, it, we, we would need to talk about this some, but it's in the absence of public pressure to look at these meetings the, you, you'd have to ask yourself, why would you go to the trouble to put them up if nobody's going to look at them and now? I don't know, there's something. We're required under the, you know, again, I'm going to fall back on, you know, Senate bill that came out in the midst of COVID because this type of format was not permitted at the time. And then the Senate bill passed and allowed for this type of format, mostly focusing probably on, you know, councils and, and boards of supervisors or commissioners, not necessarily, you know, the EAC or the TAB, no offense, but it required us to all pivot and, you know, provide the same format um, that, you know, and, and it also helped a lot because, you know, typically meetings all have to be advertised in the newspaper. And one of the things they allowed was you could put it on your, you know, we could say we're having the meeting and it's by Zoom on the website. So, you know, you could save money in that regard because if not every single one would have to be, you know, advertised that, you know, what was happening, where it was happening, and, you know, so. So while we're on this basic subject, um, what are the rules now about having in-person group meetings? If you want to have your meeting and everyone feels comfortable, you can certainly have a meeting here at the township. Um, everyone will need to maintain social distance and be and wear a mask, but it is doable. Nancy does it almost every Tuesday <laughs> that we have a third Tuesday of the month. Um, you know, park board's been meeting that way for a while. Um, zoning hearing board's been meeting in person for a while. Planning commission has done, they were meeting in person a few times and then they kind of decided they wanted to do Zoom, although they don't necessarily like the Zoom aspect. Um, but do we have access to the caucus room if, if that was where we wanted to meet? Um, yes, 
you could meet in the caucus room. That wouldn't be a problem. It, it's a little larger just for everybody. Right. Um, it's a little bit of a larger room. Um, and so people could spread out more. We could also, you know, obviously use the, we have, we have a large table set up in the back of the main meeting room. Um, and so we use it for staff meetings and, and other kinds of meetings. Um, I park board uses it and stuff like that. So you can spread out even more, um, in the main meeting room. Yeah. You just can't hear as well. True. But the, you know, depending on how many people you could do the, the conference, you know, the, the large caucus room, that's, that's easy as well. Yeah. Conference room. And, and we also have a camera in there. So if you wanted to do partially in person and a couple people were on vacation, let's say, and needed to zoom in, you could do that too. Does anyone here have a strong preference one way or another? You, uh, to, do you want to have an in-person meeting or do you not? You want to wait another couple months and see where, where we get to as a society? Well, I, I think we should wait another couple of months. Um, I think when, when, this, uh, when the state government decides they can open up more, uh, you know, the number of people that are, that are permitted to uh, uh, meet like uh, in restaurants and whatever, I think that would be a good guideline. Um, okay. Anyone else have a comment on it? We would be fine with an in-person, but I don't think we, we're okay either way. Right. How close are we to everybody being vaccinated? If you're choosing to, we are. Yeah. I have one Lots. down. I'll have my second by the end of the month. Good. Excellent. Yeah. No, Alsons are vaccinated. Yeah. Me too. So we're getting, we're getting, yeah. we're getting close, but you know. I think, yes, we, we could wait another month or two. Okay. Why don't we talk about it next month? with the idea that maybe by June we would consider it. Sounds good. Does that sound all right to everybody? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm figuring by June or July, maybe August, People, it'll depend on the groups and what they feel comfortable with. And like Art says, what's happening at the state or county level. Um, you know, but if we're vaccinated and we, I mean, I would still say, you know, We'll wear masks and try to stay socially distant. But, of course, but, uh, yeah, but it's, it's just the it's just the aspect of getting uh, of, of uh, having a physical meeting versus a Zoom meeting. That's all. Sure, sure. Okay, so let me make a note to bring that up in May for June. Okay, um, on the agenda. I don't have anything else on operations. Is there anything on the Verizon franchise negotiation? Um, Dan Cohn, who's the attorney for the consortium, um, sent some information to Bill Wirt that we're in the group that you know we could obtain the PEG information for the channel um, to continue. And there's only 15 municipalities that have a have a PEG channel like we do, so there's additional. Um, support. So they're working on the documentation. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, we're just waiting on the cone group to um, prepare the package. Um, and there's nothing for us to do at this time. And that was like a month ago from uh, Bill Wirt, who's coordinating it at Northampton Township on behalf of the consortium. Okay. In the meantime, has our franchise expired the date. i'm not really I sure i don't yeah. think so nothing's but. changed yeah <laughs> i mean you went for a year with an expired comcast franchise yeah. so they kept providing service not so. a big problem <laughs> yeah it's not exactly like they're going to move out or anything yeah okay so nothing new with verizon does anybody have anything else they'd like to bring up tonight or shall we let stephanie have dinner Oh, can we uh, can we do it till maybe to hold the meeting till eight o'clock so she can have a really late dinner? So uh, something more stylish. Yeah. Yes, month, yes. <laughs> All last week it was eight thirty. I was cooking at eight thirty at night and feeding my husband, so it's okay. 
<laughs> That's all right. I kid. No, I, uh, I, I I'm certainly used remember. to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. If no one has anything else, why don't we call it quits for tonight? Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you. Thank you. See you Thank next you very much. Okay, good night. Take care. Bye bye. bye. bye.